All right, so we went over the top half of the pump where the boost and fueling control, fuel shutoff solenoid, well, fuel shutoff lever is. Uh, went over the body of the pump, explained how the throttle controls work, uh, explained where the fuel shutoff mechanical actuator is, uh, your fly weights, which try and return you to zero throttle, cold start, um, and the cam plate mechanism, which is currently out and the reason the pump is broken. And now we'll go into the actual pumping mechanism right here. So since the last video, I put these springs back in. These two little springs here just kind of rest there and they return you to the zero throttle position. Well, close to zero throttle. So I'll just pull those out for now. So this is your actual mechanism that controls your fueling. At the end of the day, all the mods that you're doing to the pump top, you know, the your smoke screw and adjusting the star wheel down in there and turning this in by two turns, you can replace this. Um, you can adjust your full throttle stop and your idle stop over here. But at the end of the day, all of that, the end goal is to get this further this way. So if you can get this all the way to about there, that is the absolute maximum amount of fuel that this pump is capable of delivering. So my particular pump, actually, um, you can see in this range of motion is very easy because it has spent its entire life here. It has never gone further than here. That means I've been missing out on about that much throttle. Um, again, this kind of depends on your cam plates. So, you know, this broken cam plate, I'll look at the good one. If the lift of this is not high enough, moving this further won't help. So having a more aggressive cam plate would also be required if you want to get much more than what people say the stock max horsepower of these pumps is. But that nipple here, focus it, that moves at the throttle, pushes this this way to increase throttle. And the reason that makes a difference is because if you look at the side of this, you can see there's a little opening, right? on the side there. It's kind of a black spot. I'll see if I can't get uh, right there, right? And that is a relief opening. So those holes, those little tiny holes in the side, actually go all the way through the inside of the plunger into the actual like compressed portion in here where you have, you know, like say 3000 PSI of pressure. And so anytime that hole's open, you are not actually pumping any fuel out to your fuel injectors. So by moving this this way, when this whole spring mechanism and the pumping actual plunger is pushed in, throughout the duration that that hole is covered, you are pumping fuel. The second it becomes uncovered, you are no longer pumping fuel. Right, so that's why this is the most important piece of uh, your fueling control. Um, I think I mentioned in the last video, but as this cam plate rotates, there are these little roller mechanisms uh, between this cam plate and the inside. And as it hits a one of the high points, I mean, mine are pretty much worn off, but this whole mechanism would push inwards this way against the surface of this and push this in. But you also need to take note that this little indentation here keys into this little indentation here, right? So this actually mates to that surface and locks. So, um, hard to do this while holding it, but as your pump is rotating, the main gear. This is also rotating that entire assembly. And as that rotates, 
this plunger is going in and out and choosing which cylinder to distribute to. And it, it just goes in a circle and then the lines are routed funky so that they match your actual firing order. So, not too complicated once you get it completely apart and you actually look at it, but there's a lot of individual pieces that interact that do make it kind of confusing. Uh, fuel shutoff solenoid here too is a super simple mechanism. This is your actual inlet to your like actual pressurized chamber. So fuel going to be delivered flows in through here, which is actually at the top of your pump. So this has to be full of fuel up to here in order to get any fuel in here. So that'll fill, fill the actual pressure chamber in there and then your plunger will compress it up to the point when this uncovers this and then it starts releasing the pressure so you're not actually injecting it. Um, but this mechanism here is your fuel shutoff solenoid and all it does is there's a little plunger in there that will close the fuel off so you can't actually get fuel into your pumping mechanism. Uh, in my case, I actually have removed the plunger, so I can't demonstrate it. And that was because the metal shrapnel from that cam plate jarred this fuel shutoff solenoid. And uh, the first time it got jarred in the running position, so I couldn't shut the truck off. And the second time it got jarred in the off position, so I couldn't start the truck because it wouldn't get any fuel. If you end up uh, with your truck not shutting off this is you can actuate this mechanism i have a pull cable in my truck like literally just like a choke pull cable from a lawnmower that's run to the dashboard that works for that um, but if you if this fuel shutoff solenoid stops working on your truck chances are your pump is either going bad or already bad before my pump completely shit the bed like this um it was starting to misfire on one cylinder at high loads. And that was right around the time that the fuel shutoff solenoid no longer worked. So that metal shrapnel and your fuel shutoff solenoid not working is a very, very bad sign for the health of your pump. Um, there's My battery got low enough so the light shut off. But this screw here will allow you to actually go into the pump and use a dial indicator to set the fuel timing. That's one of those special tools that I'm not going to make a video about because I never did it, but there are plenty of videos that show you how to actually set the fuel pump timing. And setting fuel pump timing is, you know, there's the three bolts, one here, one here, and the one at the bottom that have that kind of, uh, you know, oval profile so you can rotate the entire pump relative to the timing cover of your engine. Uh, I think that's, uh, should be about it though. That, Hopefully you've gained a little bit of a better understanding of the inside and mechanical functionality of this pump. I would have loved to see in a video similar to this when I first started messing with my pump, but it wasn't really all of it compiled into one place and people talked about, you know, rotating this or moving the star wheel, but never really showed you mechanically why that makes a difference and why that actually allows this to move further and allows that Without the light you can't see, but that nipple that's in there allows that to push further, which allows this slide to allow you to continue building pressure and pushing it out to the cylinder for a longer duration. Um, and actually, when you get a bigger injector in your truck, you absolutely flow more fuel even without doing any of the other modifications. So if you just put bigger injectors in your truck, Without doing any modifications to the pump head, you will flow more fuel simply because the tolerances between the actual, this piece here, are not perfect and the actual plunger in there are also not perfect. So you can get a lower pressure and still flow more fuel. And that's when they talk about getting smoky injectors. So if your injector gets too big, your fuel pump will not be able to meet the same pressure while it's flowing, and that means your spray will be a little bit worse. And then you need a pump that is larger displacement, or you can just upgrade to the P7100 pump like most people who want to make big power do, but it's expensive. Uh, anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. So hopefully this is useful for you.